Okay, try again. Um, <clears throat> my dream, I was probably like a college age, and I was like at a family reunion or something. It was a get together. It was like aunts, uncles, cousins, um, parent, like everyone, like a long distance family, right? And we were at like a like a beach town or something and we had rented a beach home or something like that and it was like a two or three story home and I had a bedroom that had a bathroom connected or something on the second story and I remember that um, people were finally talking about going down to the beach area because you could walk to the beach from the house um, there wasn't like houses like around it as I remember it was kind of off to itself and then um <clears throat> Um, I was like, well, maybe I need to go change and at least put my bathing suit bottoms on so I can, like, kayak out a little bit or get in the kayak and, and if, you know, get in the water and then, or if I fall, then and I was like, well, no, my shorts are fine. I'll just stay in my shorts. And then I went to go do something or whatever, and then uh, there was a little baby there, and the baby was like, you know, I kind of took to the baby a little bit or was helping the baby or whatever. Um, but the baby was able to walk up to me and put hands up, but not like, still a little small looking. Um, and the town, I don't know. I just knew it was like a, <laughs> had some porches and stuff like that. And like, a, I don't know, like a boardwalk ramp or something off the house or something. I don't know. Okay. Then I remember uh, me and like four other, I think four other cousins or something like that, at, you know, that was perceived to be cousins in the dream, um, went, but they were, like I knew one of them was my, my son's girlfriend, Christina, and then um, like it was my children, that, but we were kind of like family like different like cousins or something and we decided to walk into town <clears throat> I don't know if we ever went to the beach you know with everyone but we had to go into town to do something <clears throat> and the coastal town was kind of like had a long dock and had docks into the water and then there were different levels of it and then shops and whatever and then um you could see a lot of people like um, scuba diving with tropical fish, like in groups of tropical fish right there at the docks. There was a lot of other things going on. And um, I remember you could see through the water there. So I could see clear enough, not like crystal, like blues and crystals and stuff like that. No, but you could see through the water there. It was clear because <clears throat> I could see the people in the water. I could see them scuba diving. And then... Um, I remember wanting to jump in and like, I was like, oh, and so we jumped in off a dock and um, I was like, oh, too bad we don't have like snorkels or something, you know, because not everyone had their scuba diver license or something like that. And then um, it was like, all of a sudden we had snorkels, like one of the cousins jumped in and had snorkels and then we were like able to like go underwater and like see things but we went underwater and it almost felt like we went straight down and like instead of snorkeling we totally went underwater with our heads and went straight down and it was probably like 12 feet or something and all right i don't know 10 10 12 feet right there and like i said we jumped off a dock type thing um so you see the pill pillars like i, I don't know and at the bottom, I felt something like biting, bite my feet. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, and I was trying to want to get up, but I felt really heavy. Like I, I was like, am I going to be able to swim up? Is something trying to hold me down? Like, am I going to be able to swim up? And I pushed to get up and I went up and then everybody was up and they were like, oh man. And it was like clams or something that were like biting like opening and closing or biting our feet or something it was weird there was clams all right there at the beach um the docks and pillars and everything and i remember feeling like that the 
place we were at almost reminded me, like, I, I haven't gone to a cape, like Cape Cod or anything, but I don't know. I have a feeling like it was a cape, but it was, um, so either like the cape in the U.S. or something, but it was more tropical because I know they were looking at, like, some type of fish, like a, when they were scuba diving, they were looking at some type of tropical fish, all of one type, but some type of tropical fish right there at the docks. Um, so it also felt like, not Jamaica, but I don't know. It felt like a, it felt like a cape. Um, but a tropical way. Like, I don't know. I think about that. Okay, then it's like I was um, in this city area, but we were on this we were on this bus, and the bus seemed like a tour bus, and it was a whole bunch of me and some other girls, and there might have been some moms or some. Um, you know, older people like in their 30s or something, I guess. But um, it was like college students. I remember just being around like teenagers or college students. Like, you know, I think maybe drinking age or something. Okay. And um, we were getting off the bus and we were walking away from it. I remember kind of the bus driver, but um, I want to say that the bus driver The bus driver was male. I believe he was African American, but I don't. Okay, and all the girls seemed like they were from like the U.S. or something. Like just, you know, just the U.S. Okay, and um, we were visiting somewhere, and the bus driver parked by this like curb, and you got out. And it was like a, it was like a big sidewalk. It was really big. You went by this building and you went into another one or something. And it was like a strip. Okay. A strip of things. Like restaurants and bars and or this town. And one of the women that was a little older or something, not one of the college students or something said, I think it was. Um, was like, I wonder why he parked there. I wonder why he didn't park um, by the lake. It would have been prettier, a prettier view to be by. And I think I was like, well, I think maybe he's got to park there because that's where they have to. They all have to park there, like the tour buses or something, or the buses. Maybe that's like their headquarter, like their building or um, their main. Like that's where they have to park in town, so they don't just go everywhere. And, um, and it's just a central location. Like, they had to park there. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then um, I remember walking into a building. I can't remember what it looked like. But um, I remember we're going, all going to the bathroom first. And um, I felt like... I wasn't going to drink. I felt like I wasn't going to drink. I felt like I was, me and the two girls I was with were just kind of there to, like, be there, you know, I guess culturally, I don't know, just to kind of be there. But we were there for something else. There's another reason why we were going there. But everyone around us was like, they're just normally just not, like, not seeing things and kind of, like, just having fun in there hopping around like restaurants and bars or something but we went into this restroom and it was a corner restroom on one of them like a stall and it was so small it like went like you walked in and hit a wall automatically went left a little bit like another like foot and a half and then went right and there was the bathroom like right there I mean not the bathroom but the toilet but you could see it all it was like it was like they put in it was like supposed to be your bigger stall where multiple people can go in together but it was small so when we were waiting someone was in there they opened up the stall and um two girls two women girls or whatever came out like no problem but then when 
Uh, and then one of the girls that I was with went in, no problem. And the girl that actually had to go to the bathroom was waiting for me to go in. And um, I was like, I'm not going to be able to fit in this stall, like go in this stall. And I like laughed and I like put myself up against the wall and, and like whatever. Like I, And I was like, I can't move. I can't even get in this stall because it was so, I don't know, it was really weird. And then um, another girl from another group came in. And she was like, went to the the sink, like to check her hair or fix up, or I think she had a drink in her hand or some makeup or something. And she was like, um, "Where y'all going?" or "What what do y'all do?" or whatever. And she was like, um, and we really had no clue what to say. And we we're like, I don't know. We heard something about there's like. I don't know, piano and two piano something. And she was like, oh, yeah, that's a good, it was like a bar, right? And she goes, it's um, it's like the dueling pianos, like the two piano bars, the dueling pianos. And she was like, yeah, that's a good one, We, you know. Um, so anyway, this place had like two pianos or dueling pianos restaurant or something like that, bar, bar. Um, Now, I can't figure out if it fit in with the first house and the, you know, the, the first part of the dream where the first house and then we went swimming and the clams, if we were in the same area still or we were on a different, it was a totally different, um, like, tour and vacation. I think it was a little different, it was different um, like, different group and different area, maybe. At first, when I woke up, I thought, was that like a... Las Vegas, no, not Las Vegas feel, but like a New Orleans feel. It felt like a New Orleans, but not. Maybe not New Orleans. Um, and I don't know where you would go that you'd be on tour buses, that you'd be bar hopping and things like that. Maybe like in, I don't really know. Um, I gotta think or ask the Holy Spirit maybe to reveal something if it needs to be said. Oh, the first part of the dream. Um, when I was coming down the stairs in the home, um, I was like, the kids are outside and it was just a sunny day. There was grass. There was grass around the home and like ocean reeds and grass and stuff like that or grass in rocks and just plays, you know, like rocky beach or rocky area. Um, you had to walk to the beach, but it was like a rocky beach. Um, anyway, uh, it was rocky, but it had sand. Okay. Sorry. Anyway, I was like, there's, I saw it. I saw it. There's a, um, um, a black wolf outside. There's a black wolf. It was huge. A black wolf, out, wolf outside. And then it went to go sniff around. It was going to put its face and went to go into, um, a cave and it couldn't go into the cave and it backed up because a big black bear came out of the cave. Like it was a black bear and a black wolf or something, which, you know, usually means like God's judgment or, you know, something coming like judgments or wrath or something coming or just, um, <clears throat> darkness. Okay, I had a dream, and I'm going to post this dream. Um, <clears throat> I recorded it when I woke up, but I was just taking it as a regular dream, and I was going to talk to the Lord about it um, further. And then I was reading my Bible and asking the Lord where to read, and I got Ezekiel 3, okay? And I'm going to read that to you. But the more I, I went, I was just going to keep reading like a, just keep reading for the day after that. And the dream kept coming to my head and I was looking and I was like, what's going on? You know, and Ezekiel three, I got at three eleven, um, and three twelve PM. Um, so I looked up that strongs and I'll post what that strongs means as well. Um, But 
Um, anyway, this is May 15, 2024. Okay. And what I feel is the dream has something to do with, um, being in the world, but it has something to do with like those vacation, um, islands. And I was like, well, what places have dueling piano bars? And I know there's a lot of dueling piano bars, but I don't think it was the U S okay. Cause there was like tour buses or something or buses. And the dream was not broken into two dreams. It was like one dream. And I don't know if the first part of the dream, that family and those teens or whoever, those, um, college students, they were then going on a vacation on the tour bus. And it started reminding me of like, maybe, um, you're getting dropped off in the area, but you're getting dropped off and maybe like a cruise ship, like they're going on a cruise and they're going to this place. Like, um, um, they're going to visit. I know there's a lot of graduations going on. A lot of college, college graduations just happened and high school graduations. And a lot of people celebrate graduating, um, with cruises and cruises with their family. And what did they go on there on the cruise to do, to drink, to party, to celebrate, <sighs> just get out of it, get out of the world. Repent and come back to God. Just, just get out of it. If you know the Lord, get closer. The days are dark. It's the end. Jesus is coming. And I've just got to say it like, like there's his wrath and, and things are going on in places and people are traveling to places. Um, just stop. Just stop. He's coming. Prepare for him. Don't prepare for the summer. Don't prepare for the next future. Don't, don't prepare for the next drink. Don't prepare for the next, um, best cell phone or outfit or, um, <clears throat> he's just coming. Just, just stop. Just stop. He doesn't want people to be entangled in the raft in the wrong place, wrong time or doing when they're not supposed to be doing. Okay, and the reason I say this is I'm going to read Ezekiel 3 to you really quick, okay? And you'll get why I need to put this on right away. Like I said, I was just going to put it on a little later, but but this is why I want to put it on. Okay, here's Ezekiel um, chapter 3. This is May 15th, 2024, okay? Moreover, he said unto me, son of man... Eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, I'm sorry, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. Okay, this is to Israel and this is to the world. So so we know God's warning everyone, right? But God's warning the world. Okay, his wrath comes on the world. Okay. Um. For thou art not seen to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel, not to many people of a strange speech and of a hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. Meaning, I'm sending you to people that understand your language. They understand your speech. It's not a hard language. People understand. Well, U.S., you understand. I'm in the U.S., okay? Or or anywhere around the world. Like, y'all understand my language, okay? I'm not getting sent somewhere where it's hard. Um, anyway, he said, Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. Meaning, the people that had the harder language, they should have been hearkening unto you. Or they would have, okay? But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. For they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard 
headed. I mean, hard hearted, headed, not headed, hard hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces and thy forehead strong against their foreheads as an adamant harder than flint. Have I made thy forehead fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they may be a rebellious house. Okay. <clears throat> Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart, and hear with thine ears, and go, get thee to them of the captivity, unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear. Then the Spirit took me up, and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another, and the noise of the wheels over against them, and a noise of a great rushing. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness, in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Abib, and that dwelt by the river of Shabar, and I sat where they sat, and remained there astonished among them seven days. Okay. And it came to pass at the end of the seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. So if God's giving like, like me, okay, um, a position to say, warn, I'm giving you this and you're not trying to turn them from their ways or telling them to stop or warning them of something that may be about to happen, then that blood I'm putting on your hands. Okay. Yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Meaning that if you warn them and they don't want to turn, then he'll die in his iniquity. But then the person warning has delivered thy soul. Now we know that it's Jesus. We know that it's all Jesus, but we're called to be watchmen on the wall and he's coming. Okay. He's coming. And I'm not the only one that has been screaming, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay. I have been brought out to do that. Um, I have been brought out to do that and I've got to do that. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. And the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will there talk with thee. Then I arose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there, as the glory which I saw by the river of Shabar, and I fell on my face. 
Then the Spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet and spake with me and said unto me, Go shut thyself within thine house. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of, my ma of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb and shalt not be to them a reprover. For they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear. For they are a rebellious house. Yeah.